Hello. Today's topic is about vibrato. What is vibrato? It is originally from the Italian word vibrali. It is applied to both singing and musical instrument playing. It is a musical expression consisting of regular and pulsating change of pitch. Why do we need to vibrate? It can add different colors to music, making it deeper, warmer, and beautiful. Back in the 16th and 17th century, vibrato was occasionally served to make special effects like an ornament. Starting in the 19th century, vibrato was used more often because it helped the expression in the Romantic period. In the compositions of the 20th century and contemporary era, it is interesting that composers sometimes write senza vibrato, which means no vibrato in certain passages to express something special. Nowadays, vibrato is used too much that composers need to particularly mark no vibrato sometimes. People like to categorize different types of vibrato, like arm vibrato, hand and wrist vibrato, and finger vibrato. However, I think these three types of vibrato are inseparable and indispensable because they all participate in the vibrato process. I'd rather use the terms arm predominated, wrist predominated, and finger predominated vibrato. I like a quote from the violin master Ivan Glemian. He said, although these three types can be fairly well isolated for practice purposes, it is only very rarely that a pure form of any one of them will be found in artistic performance. The developed vibrato may be centered either in the arm, hand, or the finger, and that particular type will then predominate, but there is no stiffness to prevent it. Each vibrato type will normal bring about an interplay of the neighboring muscles and therewith introduce elements of the other two types. How to make the vibrato happen? Here is my way. First of all, let's do three warming up exercise. The first one is the arm exercise. No bow for now. Make sure your thumb is relaxed without any tension. Never squeeze the neck. The part between your thumb and the index finger should be relaxed. Now, shift your arm from the first position to any higher position like this, back and forth. Since we are not playing any extra notes, so it doesn't matter which exact position you are shifting to. I want the arm movement to be gradually bigger and bigger, faster and faster. This exercise makes your shoulder, elbow, arms muscle relaxed and flexible. Now, let's move to the wrist exercise. The movement of wrist in vibrato is very much like knocking the door. We don't need the violin and a bow. Try this with me. Make sure your wrist is relaxed. Now, let's move to the finger exercise. Vibrato is about the first knuckle. First, we try the finger movement without the violin and the bow. Put your right hand over your left hand. Place your right thumb in the middle of your left hand's palm. The purpose is to immobilize the left hand and wrist. Now, Try to flatten and straighten your first knuckle of each finger by placing them against your left thumb.
Okay, get the violin and a bow and play some chromatic scales. The special part of chromatic scales is that we always need to use repeated fingers. Here is a G chromatic scale with my fingerings for the finger warming up exercise. It will help you loosen your first knuckle. Try this with me. We are fully warmed up and ready to do the real exercise. The first one is about hand and wrist predominant vibrato. Let's start on the third position. Galimian said it is easier to start with the third position because the lower part of your palm is attaching to the violin, which immobilizes the arm making it easier for the hand and wrist to go backwards. I need to mention the intonation about vibrato. We can't go sharper. We can only go flat and first and then come back to the original pitch. Now, let's pick a random note, E, and repeat E, D sharp, and E a few times. Remember, the impulse should come from your hand and the wrist. The finger should be passive. By going backwards of the wrist, your finger naturally elongates to a flattened or collapsed shape. And by going forward of the wrist, your finger naturally comes back to the original standing leg shape. Here are some rhythmic exercise that I wrote. This exercise will help you control the vibrato. I don't think vibrato is uncontrolled and wild. It does vary. It can be narrow and wide. It can be fast and slow. It can be intense and gentle, but it should always be controlled. Otherwise, it sounds uneven and distracting, like the voice. If you have an uncontrolled vibrato in your singing, it sounds like... The arm predominant vibrato exercise should be exactly the same as the hand and wrist predominant vibrato. However, the impulse is now coming from your arm, not the hand and the wrist. The finger should still remain passive. The arm vibrato is great if you are on the high positions. Because your fingers are already flattened and elongated, it will be hard to do the wrist vibrato. So 
the army rattle will be good. The nature of double stops doesn't allow you to do the wrist vibrato easily. So the arm vibrato will be a good choice for that scenario as well. The finger predominant vibrato is not used as often as the other two types. I'm not going to repeat all the exercise, but I do want to mention two things. The impulse is now coming from the finger, while your wrist and arm should be passive. Because of its gentlest character, the finger predominant vibrato is good when you are playing certain soft passages or when the music is so fast it is impossible to insert a hand and wrist vibrato but you want to express something special so a quick finger predominant vibrato is a good choice in this case another thing i want to talk about is the continuity of vibrato if you stop the vibrato, then the sound quality, timbre, and color immediately change. How to fix it? First of all, always start the vibrato before I start the bow. The following exercise will help you. First, Practicing the continuity of vibrato on any scales without dynamics. Now, let's play the same thing with some dynamics. With crescendo, your vibrato can go faster and narrower. With diminuendo, your vibrato can go slower and broader. Sometimes our left hand gets distracted by the right hand and it ends up doing the same thing that the right hand does. So the last exercise I want you to do is playing a crescendo and diminuendo while your vibrato remains the same. In conclusion, I think there should be no arm exclusive vibrato or hand and wrist exclusive vibrato or finger exclusive vibrato because they are inseparable and indispensable. Like what Galimian said, each vibrato type will normal bring about an interplay of the neighboring muscles 
and therewith introduce elements of the other two types. How fast or slow should I vibrate? Well, it depends on a lot of factors like style. You will not use a fast and narrow vibrato for Brahms, while using a slow and wide vibrato for Mozart. Also, the vibrato needs to match the dynamics and color you are playing. These three predominant vibrato types have their own characteristics and advantages. Hence, they can serve you in different musical contexts. Lastly, I want to recommend two books: "Warming Up" by Simon Fisher. And principal violin playing and teaching by Ivan Glimian. Both books have excellent explanation of vibrato. Thank you.